People of YouTube, today is a beautiful day. My name is Multiplier and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make album artwork extremely cheaply, all of which at a professional standard, obviously. So to give a bit of context, I've made maybe 50 or 60 bits of album artwork, all of which gone on Beatport, etc., through my record label, as, 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 well, as well as a few other projects. And there's a few tricks. It's not all quite as, as expensive and difficult as you might. Think. Look at the monkey. Oh, I'm a monkey telling information about the release. Step one, step one, step one. This is a secret, a secret of the world, not just of the music world, album artwork, etc., but a secret of the world of business. It's a bit of a secret. Your mind is about to be blown. And that is the idea of a stock image. So you can type in something like stock image uh, or, or stock images, and there's all these websites. Now, my favorite is called Shutterstock because they advertised on a podcast they like. Ta-da, Shutterstock. Now, what this website does is allow you to buy photos for to use. You don't actually get to own the photo, but, but you get to use the photo. So photos, images, logos, sort of diagrammy things, any, anything at all, literally of the best quality in the world. You can purchase these to use for business reasons or, or personal reasons anything at all. That's the magic here. So what you do instead of hiring a graphics designer, which will cost just silly money to get done to a, the highest level. So instead of doing that or, or hiring a photographer or anything, you go on this website, you type in what you want, and then you purchase it extremely cheaply, like uh, depending on the bundle you get, maybe like $10, $8, $7, some number of dollars. And the crazy thing about this is most big companies in the world actually use these. So if you go to a big company's website and you see some sort of like thing like, oh, our, our product's really good. Look, look at how much fun this person's having or oh, beautiful scenery. That, that would just be a stock image. They won't have hired a photographer to, to fly around the world to uh, some place to, to, to take a photo of somebody smiling, looking happy. It'll just be a stock image. That's the big secret of the world. And that's what we can use for album art. So I mean, I mean just to give you an example here, photos. Now, the cool thing about this is the quality is higher than you can get from any graphics designer or photographer, unless you pay, as I say, silly, silly money. So you can go to say background, or you can click another one if you want, and, and just choose something. Now, obviously, the Shutterstock text gets removed when you purchase it. But yes, you can see you get all these amazing, this isn't a paid feature, by the way. Shutterstock, if you do want to send me money, more than happy to accept it. PayPal multiply at multiplymusic.com or purchase my music production bundle, link below. Whatever you want to do, Shutterstock, I'm easy either way. Anyway, what you can do is type in things. So maybe I've, I'm, I'm writing a song, I'm writing a song, and it's about a giraffe. It's about a giraffe, and the giraffe is fun. It's a fun giraffe. So you type in giraffe, fun, and then, oh, look at all these fun giraffes. Look at these guys, look at these guys. Oh, so I, I could go through here. Pick, I mean, it's, it's, it could be quite hard to choose when there are so many fun giraffes, but you, you choose your fun giraffe, you purchase it, as I say, for depending on how many you buy at once, maybe $10 to seven, I think, I, think I, I buy five at once, so it's about $7, $5, five pounds, some number, small number. But yes, the magic here is that these are all of that very, very highest quality, a level of quality that you can't easily afford if you're paying a photographer or graphics designer. So you go ahead and you choose your stock image, you purchase it, et cetera. I'll, I'll, I'll just close that down now, click. And, and that's what gets you started. That gives you most of your album artwork. Now, I, I typed in a, a very comical description for Fun Fun Giraffe, but obviously you can do it more seriously. Um, I mean, you can see here just four examples I picked up random. So that, that would obviously be, you can kind of tell which is the background image there and which is the text. And, and there's a cool monkey here. And that one's also cool. Um, this one's, oh, Slaughterhouse Dangerous. Oh, what's going on there? But like, that, that, that that's good too. And then there's more here. So. Every style of image imaginable from the photo to the almost like artistic photo, surreal thing, through to like backgrounds, businessy things, uh, textures. You can even get like uh, this sort of type, um, like where we'd call that cartoony. Literally anything imaginable in the world, it will be on a stock image website, including in fact logos and sort of little bits and bobs. If you want a really cool arrow or you want a thing you, or some sort of symbol, then you could do that. I mean, you can literally go, you, there, if you want logos, you just go to the website, type in logos and get your logo, easy peasy. Anyway, that is the first trick, use a stock image. As I say, most of the top businesses in the world, in fact, pretty much all businesses in the world use it all the time. And even most of the top record labels, not, not all of them, there are a few that 
do hire graphics designers, but most record labels just use stock images. Um, so yes, in, in fact, as, as, a, as a fun little exercise, what you can do sometimes is take a release artwork and then do a Google search for it because you can search via images on Google and you can and you can find where they got it from. That's lots of fun. Anyway, step two, step two, step two is you need some text. Almost certainly, otherwise it's just an image and, and that doesn't really say much. So of course, how you do the text is personal preference, but there's one trick I do want to point out and that is fonts, fonts. I said that unusually to catch your, capture your attention and that's because what you want to do in an ideal world is use a non-standard font. Here's the logic. If you're using the same font or one of the standard fonts in the, the Mac or the Windows operating system, then subconsciously people will associate that thing you're creating with something that almost anyone can do because it's a, even though they don't realize they're looking, the, looking at a standard font, subconsciously they see that and they associate that with something that someone could just knock up at home. Whereas if you use a non-standard font subconsciously in the brain, they think, right, that, that's not standard. Wait, hold on a minute. That must mean they must have hired a graphics designer. That must mean they've got money to throw at professionals. And then they think it's subconsciously, of course, much better because it's non-standard. They must have had someone special to come in and, and do that. Um, but you can get these, these fonts for free using, using this uh, really good website called Google. You go to free fonts and then you just type it in. Lots of good websites here. Um, I mean, I, I, I could click one now uh, and then you just go through and then download them. Literally a bazillion fonts in the universe. Um, and as I say, yes, these are all non-standard. So bring you download them to your computer. And then what you can do is use some software to put the text on the picture. Now, Photoshop, you, and unless you already know Photoshop and you already have Photoshop and you love Photoshop, you don't need Photoshop. Photoshop is for people who spend all day using Photoshop. People who spend six, seven, eight hours a day inside of the thing, they've been using it for four years, the power users, that's what Photoshop's geared for. For a normal person, normal, um, someone like me who uses it every now and then for maybe on average half an hour a week, uh, sometimes two hours a week, but then I might not do it for three weeks, if you know what I mean. So average is half an hour a week. For people like me, I need to be do I need to have some control over the text. I need to be able to do layers and change the colors and flip it about and like and do some basic things. But I don't need all the crazy features that Photoshop has. It's it's just overkill and in fact it gets in the way. Even if I even if I learn Photoshop, all the features of Photoshop would get in the way of me using Photoshop efficiently. And so there is a solution. My personal favorite is called Pixelmator, which is this guy here. So Pixelmator, I think, is around £30, $30 or so. Put something on the screen now to confirm or disconfirm that. And I like, I like to view, again, not a paid feature, but Pixelmator, if you want to send me some money or buy my music production bundle, that's absolutely okay. Pixelmator is like Photoshop for people who aren't professional users of Photoshop. So it has all the things that people associate with Photoshop, like the layers, and, and you can change the layer modes and all sorts of fun stuff I'll show you in a sec but it's, it's simple to use and you don't even really need to look at the manual or look at tutorials. You can kind of figure it all out. Although obviously you can just type it into Google if you get confused. But yes, that, 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 is, that is the way to do it. For example, let me show you some integrations of text. Look at this monkey character. What's that on his chest? What's that What's that on his chest? It, it looks like the Relentic Records logo, which is, which is my record label. The, and it, it looks like I put it there to make it look like the Relentic Records monkey. How would I have done that? So if I can, oh, there it is. That is that layer there. So. You can see what I've done there. Before, the monkey didn't have the Relenti Records logo on his chest. So what I did is a quite, quite cool, this cool little trick in the world. So I, I got the image of my little logo thing. The layer was on at normal. So, th so this is the image with white background with a black sort of logo, logo thing. But then, so I changed the size and then I changed the blending mode to multiply. Like multiply. What that does, I imagine, is multiply the color value I think, um, with the underlying color value or something. Basically, it, it makes all the white disappear. And that's good because it means it just turns it into just like the, the black outline, which I can then put on a little monkey's chest. And I am the monkey. Easy. Next. So, this, I mean, that that this, this text here is quite simple. I think, is that some subtle mirror? Or oh, there is a bit of subtle reflection. Look at that. Look at that. I bet you didn't even realize there was some subtle reflection. 5% opacity. Subtle reflection. Subtle reflection. Just giving it that bit of extra a bit of extra pizzazz. Again, most people wouldn't put pizzazz on their images. So you put pizzazz and you are winning. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Also, also, also check out this text. Now this Pongo feet, feet, 
speaks Blanksy. That wasn't in the original image, obviously, because of course the image wasn't made for Pongo and Blanksy. It was just a cool little monkey. So I have the Pongo, 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 just some text of a font and I uh, just, just picked white. So I, I sort of used imagination and creativity to, to figure out, right, what might look like it's a part of the screen and what might what might look cool. And then I, I used some more imagination and creativity for this feet splanksy thing down here. So you can see how it looks like it's behind its thumb, which makes the illusion that the monkey's actually holding a phone with it actually saying that. Now to do that, I made the normal text, then converted it to pixels. I think you do something like right click. Yeah, convert into pixels. And then I got the little eraser tool and then erased all the little texty bit where his thumb was. So it looked like it's it behind his thumb, even though it wasn't. Zoom, 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 zoom. And, and then you just use the little eraser to erase the bits you don't need. So you can get creative, you can get creative. Let me show you another example of creativity. This one here. Now, this one's quite a simple one, but I think it's elegant. Now I actually changed the, text from the actual release. So this looks very slightly different from the actual release version because I was playing around with it earlier and I actually preferred this new text type. So I changed it a bit, but this, I, I, I like this. This is the background image, just a simple, simple image. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So when I added the text, I changed the font so to something radical, this schoolhouse something or other, print, Something or other. Um, basically, cool text. Cool text is nice. Of the artist name, Clavello, and the release name, Your Eyes. And then to make it feel like it's the part of the image, um, what I did is this is, is, is pretty clever. This pretty clever. I don't think anyone's ever done this before. Um, what I did is I went to the font. Where's the font bit? Um, where are you? Font. Oh, it's at the top. It's at the top. So under the. So I did a click probably. And then under the color, I did show colors. And then I got this little droplet thing. And then I, I, I got, so this, so you can see how, as I move this about, I'm kind of choosing a color to do the font. So I chose the color that's the background color. Bring. And therefore the font blends into the background or it kind of fits in with the background. Uh, instead of if I'd chosen a different color, such as just for example, magenta, that doesn't look as good, obviously. Undo. Perfect, so you can get creative, you can get creative. Another little trick I like to do is, is every, like every now and then as you're creating it, zoom in and out, make sure it looks good. This is especially important for album work, actually. Uh, zoom in, zoom out, shake it all about, just to make sure it looks good at all levels of zoom. Whether you're zoomed out, you gotta make sure it's still got a vibe. You gotta make sure when you're zoomed in, it's also got a vibe. You gotta make sure it's vibing the whole way through. Um, just like shortcuts. Uh, to do that, really useful, I think. Um, in addition, furthermore, other things you can do. Um, I mean, you can see here, I, I made like a little background shape thing. You can see it's just a little little bit of um, just a normal shape. Yeah, oh, I was weird that one. Um, so yeah, I, that, that one's turned off. So just like a little little shape. I mean, people like shapes. Um, and then the opacity is like 28% or so. Normally it would have been, or well, not normally, but I mean, it's, it's not even better or worse. I mean, I. You, you could argue it was better with more with less opacity, um, but you know you can. There's no right or wrongs with art. You're just creating things, so you can you can play around, get creative, um, just kind of freestyle it willy nilly, do whatever. Um, but yeah, certainly playing with opacity is a, a big part of lots of things, and like just doing just, just things like like I put where's it gone? Uh, this one. So this one is like a flipped version of the main bit and then just changed the opacity. You can see that was before with higher opacity and then lowered the opacity. Am I even saying opacity right? No idea. So, and then it just it just gives it a bit of extra something else. Um, and you can even do things like change the, uh, like make some bits bold, other bits not bold. Um, I can't change that now because I've all converted these to pixels. Uh, and then you can also, something I, I, I used to like to do an awful lot, not as much recently, but like a big part of what I used to do with the Relentic, is just try and hide, hide try and hide stuff in there. So I, I, it was really common for me to try and hide the Relentic Records logo. Um, it's not very hidden in these ones, but that's something I did like to do, um, just, just for funsies, uh, like Where's Wally? but with our album artwork. And, and you can even just, just get creative. It's all about getting creative here. So for example, on this one, this slaughterhouse thing here, I actually wrote, you may not have noticed this, um, I actually wrote the artist names on the wall. Crikey, wowzers trousers. So you can see, where's it gone? Uh, yeah, these two layers here. So bring, bring, this was normal. Well, not normal, there's still some other things on the page, but I, I wrote the names 
almost like they were written into the thing. So you can see, I, I found a cool font, a cool font, um, which I've converted to pixels. To, oh yeah, because I, I basically I found a cool font to make it look like this. I found a cool font. I've said cool font a lot now. It was a cool font. Um, I, I found a cool font, a cool font, a cool, cool font, um, and then I converted it to pixels, and then I used some of these effects. Probably one of the transform ones, because you can see it's all kind of a bit, kind of, transformed like it's all distorted and stuff um to make it look like some maniac just like written it on the wall or something um so you just kind of play around with these effects and just see what happens um i've also got like on this on the main uh you can see there's like this sort of like blurry sort of layer there which is just a like a zoom blur probably um so you can get creative with effects uh cool little trick something that i do like to do with these effects so let's say i wanted to add an effect to this uh sickness thing up where's it on where's it on where's it on i've no idea what that x is the not that x is almost invisible crazy mad and madness that um yeah so let's say sickness what i could do a cool little trick is you duplicate it so you don't mess up um, the, the previous copy, and then you just throw effects on it. Maybe like light leak. What does light light leak do to that to that version? Uh, nothing good in that case. So you just just try stuff. Uh, windmill. Maybe I want to windmill something, and then reduce the reduce these settings a bit. Um, and and that doesn't look good. But sometimes it does. So but that that is the workflow. You just keep trying things. I think so. Yes. Let, let's let's recap it. Let's recap it. Because I'm I'm just clicking around like a maniac. The important concepts, I would, say, I would say there's two main concepts that are worth knowing, or the, the important concepts. Use stock images, they're extremely cheap, and you get that highest professional quality of anything in your world, uh, anything in the world, extremely cheaply, and everyone does it, it's not cheating. It's just like using sample packs, if you like. In fact, that's a great analogy. Yeah, it's, it's like using sample packs. Use stock images from a website, my favorite shutter stock. Also, use a non-standard font because subconsciously people then associate it with a professional work so it looks more professional. And then after that, it's just a case of getting creative. Um, as I say, I like Pixelmator because it's like Photoshop for people who don't live in Photoshop. It's totally usable, um, even though it, look, it might look quite confusing at first, but believe me, I mean, I, I could hide all these panels away and it would look, look less confusing. It's not that confusing, really. Um, yeah, it's, you don't even need to read the manuals, to be honest. So yes, Pixelmator is great. And then it's just a case of, yes, getting creative. Fantastic, fantastic. That is how to create album artwork cheaply. My name has been Multiplier, and I will catch you guys on the... Um, 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 on the, um, uh, on the, how do I, on the, flippity flip, flippity missed, flippity flip. Flip up, flip, flip vertical on the blippity flip. On the blippity, I wish I was a shortcut. On the flippity flip. Yeah.